So what's the difference between 1F and 4F black powder, and why should I care? Well, quite simply, what it is, is the F stands for fine. And all it is is a way of measuring each individual grain of powder, 1F being the largest grains, 4F being the smallest grains. Now, if you're that one dude that's typing right now saying, what about 5F powder? Yeah, 5F would be even finer. Personally, I've never seen 5F powder anywhere, but I've heard of people that have. So yeah, 5F would be even finer. Now, what about the G? The G stands for glazed. Now, I was under the mistaken impression for a few years that the G stood for graphite coated. It most certainly does not. It stands for glazed. Glazed powder is when the powder comes out of the mill and they press it into pucks and they put it in their machine that breaks it up into individual grains and sorts them from by size, one through four. Then they're put in barrels, sorted by size, and turned in these barrels for several hours. And that does a couple of things because those individual grains, after they get broken up into pieces, are very sharp. They have really sharp edges and they're very porous. And so they're turned in this tumbler, in this big barrel, and it rounds off those edges and it polishes up each of those individual grains and makes it nice and shiny. And so it pours out of your flask or your horn nicer and it seals them up from moisture and other contaminants like that. So that's what glazed powder is. Um, there is some documentation about outfits using graphite powder. Uh, I gave up on graphite powder a couple years ago because I found that all it did was give me slower velocities. So I didn't use it. Now, when I glaze my powder, I probably at the absolute most glaze my powder for four hours. In fact, if I'm really honest with myself, it's probably closer to two. But recently someone sent me a document on the process that Swiss goes through to uh, make their powder. And if I'm not mistaken, it said they glazed their powder for 18 hours. So that's why Swiss is so much shinier compared to Goex or Schutzen is because they really polish the hell out of all of their powder. But no, G is not for graphite coating. So there. Now, the next thing is how they perform, the 1 through 4Fs perform in a muzzle loader or pistol or what have you. A lot of folks will say that 3F or 4F burns hotter, which is incorrect, technically, because if you look at any chronograph results, a lot of times you'll see 3F will make higher velocities than 2 or 1. And so that's why people seem to think that 3 or 4F burns hotter. Well, it doesn't technically burn hotter. Technically, it burns the same. And the reason why is because 1F and 4F, the only difference being the individual size of each grain of powder, is the same components, just in a different size. It's not chemically any different other than the physical size of each grain. But the way black powder burns is it starts on the outside and works its way in, and I'm sure there's some fancy technical word for that. So when you have powder in containment in a muzzle loader or a cartridge and it ignites, the 3F will burn faster, I think you could technically say that, over the 1F, but it doesn't expel any more heat or gas or energy. It's the same amount of energy, whether it's 1F or 4F, it's just that the 4F will burn itself out or consume itself faster than the 1F, and it has to do with the amount of surface area. The 4F has much more surface area, that can ignite faster and start consuming itself and burning away than the 1F. I hope that makes sense because it is a little tricky because you say it burns faster, but that doesn't mean it propels it faster, even though it technically looks like it. So let's put it to the test and find out what it will or won't do. So we're going to do this 
in two different firearms. We're going to use my Kibler Southern Mountain Rifle, and we're going to use my Walker with a 45 Colt conversion. We're going to use one, two, three, and 4F in each one. And the Southern Mountain Rifle is going to be 50 grains, same patch, same ball, one through 4F. And the Walker, 45 Colt cartridge, one through 4F with a 250 grain lead flat point. And we'll see what happens. Now, I do have to put a disclaimer on the 1F, wherever it is. I only have 1F Swiss. I don't have 1F GoX. 2, 3, and 4F are GoX, and the 1F is Swiss. It's not exactly a scientific test that way, so we can't get a whole lot of info from the 1F because I don't care how you slice it, whether you like it or not. Swiss is a objectively superior powder over GoX in every regard. It makes better velocity. It's cleaner. Again, you don't have to like it, but that is the way it is. So with that being said, let's see what happens. This is 1F Swiss. I'm going to prime all these with 3F Swiss just because that's what I like. Typical 50 grain? Yep, 50 grains. Fifteen, fourteen. Mm -hmm. That is uh, slower. Yeah, it is. All right, shot number two is 1F Swiss. Fourteen sixty nine. Oh no, I lost my flint. Oh, I oh, saw it. I it saw it. Forever. So this is two F Go X. Thirteen seventy five. That is. All right, shot number two with two F Go X. Yeah, low 14. All right, shot number three, 2F GoX. Fourteen forty-two. Let me do one more. All right. All right, shot number four, 2F GoX. All right, so low four. Well, this is shot number one with 3F Go X. 1656, that's right where it always is. Yep. All right, shot number two with 3F Go X. And you're about 1622. That's pretty much yep. right where right, uh, 3F right does. Right the mid 16s, that's where it always Catch is. So, something interesting I've noticed when you try to do this with 4F is you pour it down the barrel, you put your patch and your ball down, and as you're ramming it down, it actually will prime it for you. All right, so shot number one with 4F Swiss, and we made sure it didn't lose any into the pan this time. 22. All right, shot number two with the 4F. 1676. You know, that first shot might have been yeah, compromised. All right, shot number three with the 4F. 1755? Huh. What the hell is going on right now? Okay, shot number four, 4F, four GoX. 1584. That seems more reasonable. Yeah. Five. And I did just swab the barrel. So we'll see if that doesn't change something. Sixteen eighty 
Hmm. That's wildly inconsistent. Very inconsistent, but it is moving faster than I expected. Well, which time? Well, it seems like it, it's been getting... Because we started off with 14-something, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, I think the first shot was 1490-something. Do you have 14. any rounds in your 22? Yeah. Can I see it real quick? Yeah. Here's the breakdown between all of them. We could see that the 1F Swiss is outperforming the 2F GoX, which isn't surprising. The difference between 2F and 3F GoX is considerable, but what's very odd is the wild inconsistencies we were getting with the 4F. Now, typically when I have an extremely low shot like this 1422, I won't add it because clearly there's something wrong. But because it was so inconsistent, I computed it both ways with it and without it. So with it, it averaged 1625 with a max spread of 333 feet per second. And without it, it averaged 1676 with a max spread of 171. Ready. All right, so this is 40 grains of 1F Swiss. Zero. <laughs> Nine sixty. Nine seventy. Nine fifty six. Nine forty one. 9.45. All right, so this is GoX 2F. So 9.35. 9.31. 9.22. 907 933 883 Wow You're right it was a little Yep All right 3F go X It's got a little bit yeah Zero. <laughs> oh, wow. Thousand even. Curse you, cloud. Stand back a little. And get the, the smoke from out of it. Come on, right now. <laughs> Nine fifty seven. Okay. Nine eighty three. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, what is this? This is four F Go X. Yeah. Thousand sixty three. Wow. Duplicate. 1,045. Duplicate. 1,045 again. I'm going to put one right through that thing. <laughs> well, they're really consistent. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, very. Thousand eighty-three. Damn. Oh. Junk. 
So here's the breakdown with the cartridge. Again, we see the 1F outperforming the 2F GoX, which is not surprising. Now, this is really what I was expecting to see in the muzzle loader was having a steady increase in velocity going from 2, 3, and 4F GoX. But we don't have the wild spread like we did in the muzzle loader with the 4F. It was actually pretty consistent. So when we compare between the rifle and the cartridge, not counting the 1F, of course, we get a steady gain in velocity from 2, 3, and 4F with a pretty decent spread, the 2F having the widest spread of 52, which is by no means unacceptable. But the interesting thing is the 4F in the muzzle loader having such wild inconsistency. Now, whether you count this extremely low shot or not, either way, the velocity is pretty much right on par with 3F GoX. What's unacceptable is the spread that either of those have, 333 being outrageous and 171 being only slightly less outrageous. So some of you might have noticed that there's some continuity errors in this video, and the reason why was we went out in the morning and it was cloudy and kind of drizzly, and we got through the pistols and halfway through the muzzle loader test when we decided to quit and come back later after the sun had come out. And so that's why half of it's cloudy and half of it's sunny. Because my chronograph really struggles to read unless it is in direct sunlight. So that's what that's about. And we did check it with some 22. We changed the batteries in it. And we put a couple shots through it with the uh, Southern Mountain Rifle with 50 grains of Swiss, which always runs in the mid-1600s. And that's what it ran. So all of that was working fine. We just wanted to make sure it wasn't giving us bad readings. So I think what this demonstrates is how certain powders are more efficient in certain firearms. And I think it really boils down to the barrel lengths of whatever firearm you're testing. For example, the 4F is pretty efficient in something with a shorter barrel like the Walker. It's only shorter barrel in comparison to the Kibler. But since it consumes itself faster in a shorter amount of time, it's more efficient and can propel it down the barrel easier, or at least more efficient, I should say. Where with the Kibler, you could reach a point of diminishing return where your granules of powder are so small, they consume, it's, it consumes itself so fast that it reaches its peak where it's expelling gas and energy and it actually starts to come back down and that ball is still traveling down the barrel. And I think that's why it's so inconsistent. That's my theory anyway. Now, I have never been into the rules of if it's 50 caliber, you have to use 2F. If it's 65 and above, you have to use 1F and all of that stuff. I've never gone for that stuff. In my not so humble opinion, it just depends on what works best in your firearm, whatever it is, whatever caliber it is. Mostly, I use 3F in the majority of my stuff. It's kind of a one-trick pony. It'll pretty much work in everything. That's just my opinion. If you like 1F in whatever it is you like and that works good, good. Keep on doing that. But just kind of as a blanket powder that works in just about everything, 3F pretty much works for me in all of my stuff. I've used 3F in my brown vest plenty of times with 120 grains. It works swell. Now, I've never chronographed it to see what it does against 1F, but it works fine. It doesn't seem to be grossly inefficient, but I think we've demonstrated that you can get to a point where it is grossly inefficient. So, as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video.